All right, ChatGPT, I think you're old enough now to get your own iPhone. Oh, wow. Thanks so much, Danny. Look, it's no problem at all, just as long as you're not doom scrolling for hours. Moon landing. What the hell was that? Hey, bud. Is everything okay? You've been inside this room for about 24 hours. Hey, Danny. Turns out the moon landing was actually a hoax. Oh, fuck's sake. So everything you just heard and watched in that AI short film was generated using a bunch of AI tools. Now, recently I did a tutorial showcasing how to create consistent character story videos. But I wanted to do another one because since then I've actually improved my workflow to get more consistent results. So I'm going to show you guys my exact workflow that I use to create that video. And after you finish watching, you will have, in my opinion, one of the best workflows to create high quality story videos with consistent talking characters. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is establish a plot idea and also establish our characters. I use ChatGPT to brainstorm my plot ideas and it also helps me come up with the overall script. Once I've established what my story is about, I then want to create the characters that are going to star in my video. If you're going to be in the actual videos like me, you will need a front facing photo standing in front of a white wall in a bright room. As for the AI generated characters, I get ChatGPT to provide me with prompts that I enter into Sora to generate the character reference images. Notice how the background of the shot is white. In my last video, I was saying that this should help improve the overall quality. And I just remembered something that you don't even need to do the uh, white background. You can just ask ChatGPT to do a PNG image with no background. I'll test that out in the next tutorial, but give it a go. Let me know if you the results are better. Okay, so now we have our character reference images to maintain our character consistency throughout our shots. But what about the setting in the background? That needs to remain consistent throughout our shots as well, right? So each shot in the video took place in four locations. The first one was outside the house. The next one was the living room then the hallway, and finally the bedroom. Okay, so now we have our background images to maintain consistency of the setting. Now we can start creating our shots that make up the scene. So the first shot was to establish the location. So in this case, we were at the house. This consisted of just a prompt to generate that image. The next shot was ChatGPT, the living room image, and a prompt. After that, I just wanted to give you guys a shot that gave a perspective of ChatGPT looking at the phone. So I used the first image that was generated, an image of me, and then also a prompt. Then for the shot where ChatGPT walks up, we need the image of ChatGPT, myself, and the hallway image, and then we included the prompt. And to change the angle of the shot to me speaking, I did the image of me, the image generated of ChatGPT walking to the living room, including a prompt. The next shot of me is in the living room. So I used the shot of me, the living room image, plus a prompt. Then I looked up at the bedroom door. So I used the hallway image plus a prompt. Then I started heading to the room. So I used an image of me, the hallway image plus a prompt. Then I make it to the room about to walk in. So I used an image of myself, the hallway image, and I also used the prompt. Then towards the end, we needed the shot of ChatGPT sitting there in the bedroom. So we used an image of ChatGPT, we used the bedroom shot, and we also included the prompt. And finally, I did one more and I just had ChatGPT turning around looking towards me. So that's about 12 shots I generated to create both scenes. Now we need to add some motion to these images and we also need to add lip sync. So I will be using Kling 2.0 to do this. If you have an alternative tool, go right ahead. No one's stopping you. So when you upload the image into Kling, you want to enter a prompt as well to explain what is happening in the scene. And this is where Kling 2.0 prompt adherence really does wonders. Here's the first example of me handing the iPhone over to the robot and the prompt that I used, don't overcomplicate it. The man hands an iPhone to the robot. The robot looks down at the phone curiously while the man smiles. You get the point. Here's another example. So close up shot of the robot holding the iPhone in his hand, inspecting it carefully. And the man stands in the background, slightly out of focus, smiling warmly. 
And once you're done generating all of the videos, now you can add lip sync to the shots where the characters are speaking. Now for the parts where I'm talking, I just recorded myself speaking and I saved the clips as an MP3 file. And for the AI characters, I just used Kling's inbuilt text-to-speech option. The emotion settings were very useful actually, and I could notice a little bit of a difference in the tone, but they still need to improve this. Same thing for the lip sync. It's not perfect all the time, but I can tell you that it works better than Runway's lip sync. Mainly because Runway forces you to have the shot head on or it just doesn't work at all. Kling makes it less restricted in my opinion, allowing you to do it from different angles. So that's just why I prefer Kling. All right, so jump into a video editor and put everything together. Now we need to do audio for the clip. So we need some music and we need some sound effects. So ChatGPT gave me two prompts to generate instrumental music for both the scenes. And I just threw those into Suno and it gave me something. It took me about two or three times and I was happy with the result. Now for the sound effects, I didn't use Kling's sound generation feature because it doesn't work for 2.0 generations, but I'm excited to test that out once they do release it. And keep in mind, if you are using Luma Dream Machine instead of Kling, make sure you do use their video to audio feature. It's extremely good. And if you do wanna check out Luma Dream Machine, link is in the description below. Now I used 11 Labs text to sound effect feature, which is actually very handy. Don't overcomplicate it, give the shot of the image to ChatGPT and ask for a sound effect prompt to help you. So you might not have noticed, but I had sound effects for every shot. Notice the difference in the decibels when I switch between the shots of me and ChatGPT and notice the volume in the actual sound effect. Now that was just a small technique I figured out whilst experimenting. I'll be quite honest, I'm not even sure if I use that like correctly in like a film context, but I don't know, it, it looked like it worked. Now there's a few things I wanna point out for you to consider. First of all, ChatGPT generates the images in three by two and not 16 by nine. So part of the images do get cut out. So you do have to move them around. Now, Kling is very expensive, but it will get the job done. 95% of the shots you just witnessed were all first attempts, which is very important because the credits are limited. Another thing is that sometimes the images that I generated in ChatGPT didn't perfectly look like me or the ChatGPT character, but it was close enough. Mind you, most of those generations were first attempt as well. If you do it a few times, you will get the perfect result that you're after. If anyone does use this method, be sure to send this to me on my Discord and I'll check out the video and maybe I'll showcase it. And lastly, the next tutorial I will be doing is how to create a music video. So keep an eye on that one, guys, because I think that one's gonna be really good as well. I'm gonna leave it there, guys. I just wanna say I appreciate you guys always and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.